Hey everyone, welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture. I have another book review for you today. Um, we're going to be taking a look at Shaggy Planet by Ron Goulart. Or Goulart, I don't know how you pronounce it for sure. Uh, this is a Lancer paperback. Um, I think I got this at a used bookstore. I don't think it was a thrift store. Yeah, $5.00. Bought it not knowing what the heck it was, um, but it was old, and I like the look of it. A cover that has relatively little to do with the story within. I won't say nothing to do, but relatively little to do with the book. So what's this one about? This is um, a little science fiction. A little bit of detective mystery, uh, a little bit of comedy, and it does all three pretty well. The, uh, the overall plot structure is that it focuses on a character named Peter Torres, who is a mercenary private eye, who is hired by a, uh, by a company to investigate the disappearance of a high official from a planet called Barnum, who seems to control, you know, a system or, or several planets, one of which is the one where uh, where Torres is at in this book. It is a sort of backwater planet, um, colonized by human beings. It's relatively unimportant. It has uh, it 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 changes governments often and they're all corrupt and horrible and so Torres has to try to track down what happened to this man that's the basics let's take a look at the first uh, couple three cha uh, chapter paragraphs um, you get an idea of of the writing style so this is chapter one when they changed partners for the third time he found he was dancing with a robot. Peter Torres kept on snapping his fingers and stomping his feet. The android, who resembled a plump blonde girl, was wearing a white ball gown rich with fine lace. You work for the embassy? Torres asked. Act natural, said the android. She tossed her long blonde hair, clapped her hands above her head. I do this pretty well, considering it's all programmed on punch tape. Torres was a tall, lean man in his early thirties. His face, which had been out in too much bad weather on too many odd planets had a slightly knocked about look he grasped the robot around her lacy waist and they went stomping and snapping through a portion of the crowd at the embassy ball he asked who sent you you know replied the blonde robot stepping into an alcove torres asked you're with the mirabilist agency the mirabilist agency of course is the or agency uh kind of a mercenary agency who hires him to find this missing man, or at least find out what happened to this missing man, on a planet in the midst of a bit of a civil war. Maybe the civil war hasn't quite started yet. There's a rebel leader out in the jungle. Again, very corrupt government. Um, it's a very interesting bit of world building. Uh, he weaves it well. Um, this is a setting where everything everything is fake you don't have marble floors you have pseudo marble you have uh, uh, reconstituted food you have every material is fake there's no real wood there's no real almost anything everything's plastic everything's fake in this future um, published in 1973 and that's probably why there was an awful lot of that going around in decoration in the late 60s into the late 70s. That sort of perfect synthetic plastic future that people, some people dreamed about in the 50s was starting to fall apart by the early 70s. You see it in some of the decor that was a return to natural materials, natural wood, um, driftwood coffee tables. Um, glazed tile, you know, terracotta tile, um, lots of ferns and lots of plants. That was a big thing. It was sort of a sort of a return to nature 
away from the synthetic, away from the fake. Let's have organic foods, as they call it. Um, you know, get away from the prepackaged stuff in cans and start actually making real food again. Sound familiar? A lot of that going around right now. Um, it's a perpetual issue um, in, the, say, the 20th and 21st centuries. And so you have that on display in Shaggy Planet as sort of the the backdrop and you do have androids and you do have robots and uh, a lot of high tech but the, the the high tech you know this is soft sci-fi the high tech is there to advance the story and to create the feel of the setting and it's not so much what's really important um the story itself is sort of a picaresque you know as this man who is a little bit um a little cynical maybe a little acerbic uh, but funny is going through tracking down this mystery, talking to different people, some, you know, informants that he's used in the past, some new people, and seeing this world that is sort of spun into a absurd extreme in so many ways. Um, it's, uh, the characters are good, characterizations are good, they're enjoyable. The funny stuff is funny. I got a few genuine laughs out of the book. Um, there's a little bit of action. This is a private eye who has two, um, like, electric screwdrivers in, in shoulder holsters for dealing with robots. Um, some of the robots can have um, uh, devices attached to them that will, you know, control them and make them do things they're not meant to do. And he uses that on a couple of those devices to get rid of them. Um, but, you know, the plot is not overly complex. Uh, truth be told, you could probably figure it out relatively quickly in the book um so there's setup and there's payoff but it's not really complex um because the mystery is not really the point um the setting is not really the point it's a criticism of a synthetic fake world and it's closer to the point than the than the plot um but i think the, the point of the book, and there actually is one, I think the point of the book, and I, this might get a little bit spoilery, um, the point of the book can be found, I think, in chapter 12, um, which ends in a very, I found it a very funny, almost sex scene, not quite, almost, that in itself is a bit of a, well, a bit of a setup. It's, it's, there's actually a lot of character work there. And there's a sort of a, a an anticlimactic play, uh, um, payoff towards the end that I think gets to the heart of the book. And this is why I think the setting is maybe more important in some ways than the plot, although you know, the, the, plot, the plot echoes this to some degree too. Um, I think it has to do with with reality and with illusion. If you think back to some of the the fairy stories uh, you get in Ireland and and you know to some degree England, or the Celts, I think primarily, and the concept of glamour. You know, the man who 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 works hard or trades something important for a pot of gold only to find out it's actually just old leaves. Um, the person swept up into a dance that, that kills them. Um, the person who lives down with the fairies for what seems like a day and comes up and a hundred years has passed and everything they had is lost. It's that, that way that power, fame, money, glamour, can separate you from what's really important in in your life. I don't mean in life in general. I mean in your life. What's real in your life? It's not the stuff. It's not the opinions of people you don't know being popular. It's, you know, your wife, your children, um, your family. It's close friends. Things that last, 
things that persist. Um, and there's a choice made in this book, and, and it almost seems like it's a it's a side thing. It's not that important. That I think sums up the real message and point of the book, which is about choosing wisely, because everything everything's fake, and and Peter Torres knows it. He doesn't. He doesn't fight, he doesn't shout, he doesn't scream and protest it, but he knows it. And he's trying to find what's real. Hey, that's true of almost any detective story, right? It's about finding out what's real through the lies. Um, and sort of defeating the lying liars who are weaving those lies for their own benefit. And you get that here. But you get it in a book that's kind of funny and whimsical. It's not like this hardcore slog. It's not hammering these things into your head. In fact, I had to really think about it for a while. Because at one point I was tempted to say, you know, I don't think this book really has a point. It was just a fun little romp through this and that and the other. And then I got, you know, thinking about it. And I'm like, well, no, I think there is a point that's deeper than just, oh, society's so fake these days. Well, it is. But it always has been, too. And despite that, many people have managed to find something real. They managed to get to what's, what's true and what's beautiful in life, despite all the fakery. And maybe they enjoy a little bit of the fakery along the way. You know, you can you, when you know what it is, when you don't take it too seriously. And that's, that's I think, Peter Torres. Peter Torres might be the hero that we need in this day and age. The man who finds the truth, who understands the lies, but also understands that you can't really, really fight the lies. The illusion, the glamour, the crazy dance is going to go on. And the way to, to win is to choose not to participate and get down to the really good things in life. All right, maybe I got a little bit more philosophical than I should have. Maybe maybe Ron Goulart will go, oh, geez, I had no idea that's what I wrote. I just thought I wrote a funny little detective story. Who knows? Uh, but Shaggy Planet, it was, a, it was a nice surprise. I enjoyed it almost right from the very second I started reading. Um, you know, chapter one got me. Chapter one got me in. I enjoyed it. Uh, I highly suggest it. If you can find a copy out there, I'm sure they're out there. Um, give it a try. I think you might enjoy it. And maybe, maybe you'll see what I saw as well. Um, that getting down to the important things in life is what it's all really about. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe, please share with a friend. Shaggy Planet, Ron Goulart, or Ron Goulart, 1973. Great little book. Folks, may God bless you. Please go out there and be kind to one another. And um, try to have a little bit of fun. I'll see you next time on Dad's Den of Pop Culture.